friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agenbar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is a follow on from a video I made a couple of weeks ago about flex pitch. Today we're going to have a look at flex time, how to use it, examples of using it and all the different modes. It's a really useful tool to have and to be able to use. There's nothing worse than spending ages making sure that all your tracks are really nicely recorded, only to get to the mixing stage to find out that one of them's out of time. It can completely destroy a mix. Before flex time, we would have very limited options about fixing this and probably would end up re-recording that out of time track. But now we can use flex time to our advantage as a relatively quick and easy solution. So make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. Flex Time is a program that allows you to manually alter the timing of a track. There are many different modes in Flex Time, specialised to different instruments and types of tracks that we're going to have a look at. And you use Flex Time in the same way for each mode. So let's have a look at how to load up flex time and how to use it. Firstly, you want to enter flex mode by clicking this button up here. You then need to turn flex mode onto the individual track using the on off button like so and choose the flex time mode from the drop down menu. Like flex pitch, flex time turns off Logic's destructive editing feature and is pre fader. When you've turned on flex mode, you go into the track editor to view your track in more detail. You'll see the simple waveform of your track, so you need to click the flex show button to allow you to make the edits in flex time. Then you will see a similar screen to this pop up. Logic analyzes your audio and places transient or beat markers where it thinks the transients fall. These are the dotted lines that you see. You can then click on a dotted line to make it solid and drag it to change the placement of that section of audio. Make sure you isolate a section of audio before moving it. You can also add additional markers by simply clicking wherever you like to alter the timing of any part of the audio. You can also create three transient markers surrounding a section of audio by clicking on the bottom half of the region on a transient marker like so. Then you can start to edit the timing of your track. When we saw the drop down menu, there were six different options. These are what we call the flex time modes. There are four main modes which are dedicated to altering the specific timing of your track while still sounding natural. These are slicing, rhythmic, monophonic and polyphonic. And each mode is specialised to a different type of instrument. There are then two additional modes which create an artistic effect whilst you alter the timing of your track. These are Temophone and Speed and can be used to create a really interesting sound in your mix. The first mode is called Slicing and this is the automatic mode. It's the mode that your track will be on when you turn on flex time. It works best on short transient hit noises like drums. There's no time compression in this mode, so that means the audio will stay exactly the same, only the placement of the audio will be changed depending on where you drag the markers. So let's have a look at an example of a drum track being edited using slicing mode. So here's an example of a drum track that is slightly out of time. Here it is with a simple click track. I'm going to select the transients using Logic's markers and drag the beginning of the audio to the bar line. Now the audio sounds like this. It's a lot tighter and a lot more in time. You can barely tell that it's been edited. There are then additional flex time settings in the track information column up here. 
The fill gaps adds a slight delay to the track to fill any gaps created by your edits. The decay sets the decay time that the fill gap setting applies. And the slice length determines the length of the slices that flex time makes. Here's the drum tracks with the automatic settings. Now here's the drum track with those settings altered. You can hear that it makes our time edits sound a lot more natural and filled out. The second mode is called Rhythmic, and as the name suggests, works best on rhythm instruments such as guitars and keys. The algorithm takes a tiny bit of the audio at the end of the selection you've made and loops it to fill any gaps created by the time edits. That's why it works so well on rhythm instruments. It keeps that full sound and that momentum because there are no gaps left. Here's a piano track that is out of time. Now here I've edited it in the exact same way I did during slicing mode and this is the result. It sounds a lot better and again the edits aren't that noticeable. The additional settings in the track information column for this mode include loop length. This determines the length of the looped audio used to fill the gaps. Decay will determine a decay that's applied to the looped section of audio. And the loop offset offsets the loop to stop any attack sounds being included in the loop, which may make it sound unnatural. It essentially helps to crossfade the loop with the rest of the audio. Here's the track with the automatic settings. And here it is with altered settings. It's a subtle difference, but I think it improves the audio. The third mode is monophonic, and this mode is designed to work on single lines. And you may think, well, that's essentially what slicing mode does. However, monophonic is specialised to work on pitched instruments, and slicing is not. Monophonic mode works really well on vocals and lead guitar. Here's a vocal that's been sung slightly out of time. Okay, so you messed up, won't do it again. Fessed up, thought I was your friend. Messed up, for a one out of ten. For a one out of ten, ten, ten. And here it is edited using monophonic mode. Okay, so you messed up, won't do it again Fessed up, thought I was your friend Messed up, for a one out of ten For a one out of ten, ten, ten There is only one additional setting in this mode, called percussive This preserves the area around the transient markers on the track so they are not left out when the audio is moved This is perfect when you're editing more percussive instruments such as a glockenspiel or a more percussive vocal, like rap vocals. When editing with monophonic mode, you need to make sure that you have a really dryly recorded track. If there's any reverberation or noise in your track, you're probably best using polyphonic mode, which we're going to have a look at now. The last of the four main modes is polyphonic. This mode works really well on tracks where there are multiple notes playing at the same time. So it works really well with backing vocals or acoustic guitars or piano. We need to be careful when using this mode and use it quite sparingly. This is because it has a lot more complex algorithms than the other modes, so it can be really CPU heavy. Here I've got an out of time acoustic guitar. And 
here it is with time edits. And like with the other modes, we get a really decent sounding result. There is one additional setting to this mode called complex. This just allows Logic to place some more complex transient markers when you have a busier sounding track. The first of the additional modes in flex time used to create an artistic effect is Temophone. This mode is designed to emulate the sound of old time editing methods created by tape machines. It's a really unusual effect, unlike anything I've really ever heard before. So let's have a listen to an example of a vocal that's been edited using the Temophone mode. Here is a vocal I've edited using Temophone mode. You'll be able to hear the sections of audio that I have stretched and moved, as you will hear that those sections sound different. Okay, so you messed up, won't do it again. Fast up, thought I was your friend, messed up. I think that this is an effect you have to purposefully want in your mix, but can be used really effectively. There are two additional settings to this mode, grain size and crossfade. Grain size determines how drastic the changes in pitch of the edits are. The lower the grain size, the less drastic the changes. Crossfade changes how abrupt and obvious the effect sounds. When the crossfade value is towards zero, the sound will be harder and more abrupt. The final mode does what it says on the tin. It allows you to increase or decrease the speed of your track. This can be really useful if you have a consistently slow or consistently fast track. For example, if someone's recorded along to a track at the wrong sample rate. It does, however, change the pitch of your track, which the other modes avoid doing. If you're editing a pitched instrument, this can create a really interesting effect in your mix. But if you still want a natural sounding time edit, then this mode works best on unpitched instruments. Here I've got a consistently slow vocal. So let's select a section of the track to speed it up slightly. Here's how the track sounded before. Okay, so you messed up, won't do it again. Fast up, thought I was your friend, messed up. And here it is after. Okay, so you messed up, won't do it again. Fast up, thought I was your friend, messed up. You can clearly hear that the edited section has been sped up, but you can also hear how it's gotten higher in pitch. So that's the basics of using flex time. It's a bit of a lifesaver and has really helped me out in the past. It's a great tool to have with some really complex algorithms that allows us to get effective and natural sounding results. I just love the fact that there are multiple different modes specialized to work on different types of instruments. It's that extra level of thought and detail that makes this program so amazing. I would advise that you practice using each mode on different instruments and becoming familiar with them. Remember, the premise of using each mode is exactly the same. We should also bear in mind that whilst we want our tracks to sound tight and in time, it's easy to overdo it and quantize every note in the track. And this can leave the performance of the track sounding quite robotic. So like with flex pitch, we just need to make sure that we make our edits sympathetically. Sometimes less is more. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell for new videos every Wednesday and I will see you again soon.